Remember hard drives? You know, these noisy spinning metal things that were once the percussion section to the symphony of sound that defined home computing. Back in the olden days, it was a point of pride to have fast, reliable SCSI hard drives, and uh, all Macs once did, instead of the less advanced, cheaper, and uh, boring IDE. Today, however, that exclusivity has become something of a hindrance. All mechanical hard drives will eventually fail, and there's precious few good replacements for the SCSI ones when they do. Until recently. Today, we're gonna look at the blue SCSI, a relatively new SD-based SCSI hard drive replacement. It's open source, open hardware, easy to use, and it has some really cool features. And it's my new favorite SCSI hard drive replacement. And today, I'm gonna show you why. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking the marvels of technology that are modern microcontrollers, and using them as glorified peripherals in ancient machines with a fraction of their computational power, you'll fit in just fine around here, so I hope you'll consider subscribing. Now, there have been a lot of really great videos about the technical aspects of Blue SCSI, and I'm gonna link a bunch of that content below in case you're interested in doing a deep dive. But in this video, we're really gonna focus on just how great the Blue SCSI is to use and some of the really cool things that you can do with it and why I think it's such an incredible value to replace those aging SCSI hard drives. We'll be installing this one into its new forever home, my Macintosh Color Classic, which we've recently hacked into a Power Mystic. I'm gonna replace my old go-to, a SCSI to SD version five, so we'll get a little comparison in there too. But first, let's get some really quick background on what exactly the blue SCSI is and how do these things even work? It's based on the STM32 development board, which is effectively known as the blue pill. And that's this little board on the top of the device here. Not to be confused with the red pill, which as we've learned from the matrix, is just a whole lot of hassle. You had a really nice office job, Neo, and then you messed it all up. Anyway, blue pill is where the name blue SCSI comes from. Basically, the device comprises that blue pill right at the top here, flashed with some custom open source software and attached to an open hardware daughter board, which has the SCSI connector on it. And the daughter board has a micro SD card slot right here. I'll put a link in the description to Eric Helgeson's GitHub page. And the premise is simple. Load that micro SD card up with a bunch of disk images and the disk images look like SCSI devices to the host computer. It's so simple on the surface, but it's actually really powerful in that simplicity. Let's compare it to my old go-to, the SCSI to SD, which seems pretty comparable at first. Both let you replace a SCSI hard drive with a silent and reliable SD card. And both can be powered right off of the SCSI bus. Both fit neatly into old hard drive enclosures. But the blue SCSI has some real advantages over the SCSI to SD. First, it tends to be a lot cheaper. Depending on the version, the SCSI to SD starts at around 60 bucks and can go up to around 100. The blue SCSI tops out at 50 bucks for an assembled device and if you're handy with a soldering iron, you can actually buy a kit for around 25 bucks. And if you source the components yourself, you can probably put one together for even cheaper than that. It's the beauty of open hardware. Second, the blue SCSI is actually fundamentally different in operation to the SCSI to SD. You see, the SCSI to SD takes an SD card and just presents it as a SCSI hard drive to a machine. But the blue SCSI takes those disk images off the micro SD card and then presents each of those images as a separate SCSI device to the computer, which offers a ton of flexibility. There's some really cool things that you can do with that. Now, I'm not saying that the SCSI to SD is bad, far from it. Using the SCSI to SD utility, there are a ton of really interesting features and they're dead reliable. I've been using them forever. I'm certainly not gonna be throwing any of mine in the garbage. But due to the flexibility of using multiple disk images instead of multiple SD cards, this blue SCSI is gonna make a great match for how I wanna use my Color Classic here. You know what else is dead reliable? 
the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. Long famous for their fast and secure VPN service, NordVPN has a lot more to offer today. Using a VPN like Nord is a great way to remain private when surfing the web, but there are a lot of other cyber threats out there. NordVPN has recently launched Threat Protection, designed to block trackers, intrusive and malicious ads, and protect against harmful websites and files. Seamlessly integrating into the NordVPN app, threat protection goes above and beyond your normal VPN protections, which is really important today. There is always a new cybersecurity threat waiting to invade your devices, sometimes even from just visiting a malicious web page or viewing a malicious ad. Threat protection can block those things before they even have a chance to load. Nord also offers great additional services like Nord Pass, Password Manager, and Nord Locker for secure cloud file storage. So check out nordvpn.com slash action retro for a special deal. It'll really help the channel out. Link in the description below. Okay, let's install the blue SCSI in the Color Classic and make sure we can actually boot from the disk image that I put on here. And then I wanna show you something really, really cool that we can do with this kind of a setup. Oh, and we should probably take some benchmarks of the SCSI to SD too, which is in here right now. All right, firing up the Mystic Color Classic. And if you have no idea why I'm calling this thing a Mystic, check out our build video right here. Essentially, we upgraded the bejesus out of this thing with an extremely fast motherboard, which itself was upgraded with an extremely fast PowerPC processor. It's probably my favorite build that we've ever done. I've been wanting to build this machine since I was a teenager. So definitely worth checking out that video. Okay, so I've started this back up into PowerPC mode. Yeah, look at that. PowerPC 601 at 66 megahertz. <laughs> Pretty cool thing to see inside of a once abysmally slow color classic. But I think this will give the hard drive benchmarks the best possible chance here. And I'm actually expecting them to be pretty comparable between the SCSI to SD here and the blue SCSI because that's what I've seen from some other people who have run benchmarks, but I've never actually seen somebody run Mac Bench 4. So I'm gonna set this to all disk tests and uh, I think this is gonna take a little while, but here we go. All right, benchmarks complete. So let's save this to the desktop. SCSI to SD. And using the magic of Mac networking, I'll connect to my PowerBook G4 to store the results of the benchmark. Now to get down to where the hard drive is, which is kind of all the way down in here, I am gonna pull the analog board off. Okay, so here is my blue SCSI as it arrived from Tom. And Tom is the person I ordered it from on SCSI.blue. There's a couple different sellers who have kits and pre-assembled versions. So I opted for the pre-assembled version from Tom and it came with two rather nice surprises. The first being the external version with the DB25 connector. So thank you so much for that, Tom. But even more awesome, check this out. I went to look for the instructions in the package, which are right here. And I have this nice little card to Sean where, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Tom. This was so sweet and uh, this really made my day. Thank you so much. So here are the instructions for the blue SCSI and uh, yeah, written on a color classic in Claris Works and printed on an image writer too. Pretty amazing. But it's super simple. We just format a micro SD card as XFAT, place the image file on it. And uh, there's a special naming convention for the image files, which we'll look at uh, in a bit. 
But yeah, it's really easy. The, the file name says what the size is and the SCSI ID, and that's really all you need to worry about. Just put files on a XFAT SD card and you're good to go. Now, my SCSI 2SD came with this very nice 3D printed bracket here, which would let me install it onto the drive sled. But Joel Crane from Potato Fi was nice enough to send me over a bunch of really, really high quality 3D printed brackets for Blue SCSI here. And uh, yeah, these are made to fit perfectly into a drive sled. So I think I'm gonna use this one. And this has the screw holes on the side and the bottom here, which I think will let it sit, uh, well, screw in a little more securely to the LC575 drive sled, which is in the Color Classic. So this fits in right like this. And you know, look how nice that is. There's even like a little sled here for the micro SD card. So normally your micro SD card would just slide in right here. And yeah, it's pretty nice with this little sled here, but I want to try something a little bit different here. And uh, I'm actually a little concerned. So I have this little extender deal, which goes from micro SD at the end to full size SD here. And what I'd like to do actually is run this outside of the case and maybe Velcro it onto the back of the case so that we can easily swap SD cards in and out and write new disc images and try them out on the Color Classic. Uh, but I just realized with this beautiful potato fi case, this might not fit correctly. And it doesn't. Uh, we're gonna have to modify this case. Joel, please don't murder me. I'm very sorry. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to snip off these two little guide tracks here. Uh, I feel so bad, Joel, I'm so sorry. I'm ruining your beautiful art. Oof. All right, that came off really easy. All right. And now this should fit perfectly. And it does. Okay, so here's our SCSI to SD, which is just kind of laying in here. Take this sled out. And yeah, we can just screw this right on. The holes line up perfectly. There we go, rock solid. Perfect fit. All right, it worked. It booted off the blue SCSI off of our nice little extender deal here. Excellent. Okay, so I have two disc images on the SD card. Mystic SD is basically just a copy of everything that was on the SCSI to SD's SD card. And then I put a stuff partition on there too, which is a stuffed disc image, just to see how multiple disc images worked. And I've also connected to the public folder on my PowerBook G4 so we can get the benchmarks that we saved from the previous run. But let's run our benchmarks on the disk. And hopefully this won't take too long. Didn't take too long with the SCSI to SD and it's uh, getting kind of late. <laughs> oh boy, well, I am pretty surprised at these results and uh, <laughs> Those tests took like three times as long to run on the blue SCSI as they did on the SCSI to SD. And honestly, these results are pretty surprising. So the green line benchmark is the built-in baseline, a Power Macintosh 6160 with a spinning R drive in there. So yeah, I was hoping we would beat that, but we did not. Even though we're a 66 megahertz power PC, I think the bottlenecks of this system bus, plus these SCSI replacement devices on SD cards, they're just, they're not as fast as you would think they are. So in both the disc overall performance and the publishing disc overall performance, the SCSI to SD was 
quite a bit worse than the spinning hard disk in the PowerMac 6100. And the blue SCSI was dramatically worse. <laughs> I was not expecting that much of a difference. And then if we scroll down in some of these tests, well, they're all over the place. So in sequential read, 512 and 1K, the SCSI to SD lost to the blue SCSI by a lot. But then in 32K and 64K, the SCSI to SD won by a wide margin. And it's the same story as we go down. Some places the blue SCSI wins, but in a lot of other places, the SCSI to SD does perform a lot better. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I was not expecting this. Now I know there is a new firmware available for the blue SCSI. It's still in beta, but they say it's 10% faster. So, you know, I'm definitely surprised by these results. And uh, I think this is a, uh, it's good to put out there that, you know, there are benefits and trade-offs here. I'm still gonna keep the blue SCSI in here and I'm still gonna say it's my new favorite just because it's so easy to get files on and off of it. Let me button this Color Classic back up and then, uh, yeah, check this out. Okay, so for now I've attached it with a little bit of Velcro on the back of the case here on Joe's little 3D printed nice back plate here. And that'll work just fine, although I think I probably want to figure out some kind of a 3D printed solution. Maybe I can figure out something to get it to come through this cutout here. I don't know, but this will work just fine for now. And then, okay, now let me show you the absolute coolest thing. So since we are using just disk images on an SD card that's formatted in FAT32 or XFAT, yeah, we just, we have them right here. And they can be named either HDA or IMG. So here's the two devices we saw mounted earlier. So HD means hard drive. The first zero means SCSI ID zero. Second zero means LUN zero. And then 512 is the sector size. And then whatever you want to put after that to name the drive just so you know what the file is. So I just use the file size there. And Blue SCSI has a whole bunch of images available that you can download for pre-made images. There's also diskjockey.app which will allow you to create arbitrary images of whatever size you want. But the coolest thing by far is that we can take these images that we just booted our real life Mac from and boot them up right in Basilisk 2, the Macintosh emulator. Let me just do a new folder here. Now it's always good to make a copy of your disk image rather than work from your SD card directly. But now we can go into the Basilisk GUI. Let me take this other stuff out of here. And I can add that mystic hard drive image. Now it has to be .img. It's very concerned about the extension. Click start here and then click basilisk2.app and look at that. <laughs> there is our Mac and uh, yeah, booted right into Basilisk 2. And if you want to try out Basilisk yourself, check out this guide from the Macintosh librarian, which will pretty much guarantee that you have a working emulation environment up and running in no time. And further, Bacillus 2 has an option to make a Unix shared directory. So anything I put into this shared folder, like these two backgrounds here, will show up here inside of the disk image. And I can just drag and drop right onto the hard drive. <laughs> and now it's on the SD card. And when I put the SD card back into the Mystic and boot it up, I'll have those backgrounds. <laughs> What an amazing way to get files back and forth into your classic Mac without having to do any other shenanigans. Now, I do want to point out that as I was hacking around with this, I did run into some weird intermittent issues with 
disk image files from the SD card, trying to open them in Basilisk. Sometimes it would inexplicably not work and I wasn't sure why, but other times it would work just fine. And a file would boot just fine between the actual Mac and Basilisk 2. But yeah, Blue SCSI is a continuous work in progress and uh, don't let that detract you because if you're just putting disk images on there, I think it's gonna be dead reliable for you. Okay, so that'll do it for today's video. The Blue SCSI is just, it's so cool. What a cool use of modern technology to inexpensively and really effectively revive these aging machines. And uh, yeah, it definitely, it has advantages and disadvantages over the old go-to, the SCSI to SD, which is still also a very amazing device, but it's a lot harder to build this yourself than it is to build a SCSI to SD. And it is still generally more expensive, but as we saw, it seems to be faster in a lot of respects. And uh, yeah, both of them are excellent solutions, but I would wholeheartedly recommend checking out a, a blue SCSI. It's inexpensive, it's built by enthusiasts and uh, yeah, open source, open hardware, and just, it's so cool. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to B Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Briggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Ruck K Mods, John Malman, Nano, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons, and all of my Patreon supporters who help to make these videos possible.